worship you to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you to worship, to worship you, I live. To worship, to worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Oh Lord, to worship. You 
loved us more than we loved ourselves. Lord, we praise you. You care for us more than we care for ourselves. Lord, we praise you. Come on, if you live to worship. Come on, let's worship him. Come on, let's honor him. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is Alpha Omega. He is the beginning, the end. Hallelujah. All praises. All honor, all glory goes to the true and wise, only true and wise, living God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and praise him. Amen. Come on, put your Amen. We do honor the spirit of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's in us today. Thank him for being one God. Amen. And beside him, there's no other God. And besides him, there's no other God. He is the only one. Amen. And in this dispensation, the name Jesus is carried for salvation. Amen. And we appreciate God. Amen. For allowing us to feel his power as he did today. I said, I thank God for letting us feel his power. You know, Satan is always busy, but God is busier. <laughs> amen. And we thank God, amen, for this wonderful experience that we have. Amen. You, you, if you wasn't here during the prayer show, then you understand what happened. Amen. We came together on one accord and praised God. Amen. And chains started breaking. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. 
people that ain't praised God in a while started praising him. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. People that haven't felt God in a long time started to feel his presence. Amen. Because there is power in praise. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lord. Amen. I, I just thank God. I just, it was that presence was in overwhelming fullness. And when we talk about the fullness of joy, amen, that's something that we felt here today. Amen. And we're so appreciative of everyone that was engaged in the service. And it calls for an atmosphere to shift. That was a praise. You know, we, we normally cut the service off at 1, but it was almost 1.30. Everybody was still praising them. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, it's something about when everybody get together and just praise God. God will sweep in here. Amen. Let's just give our Lord, amen, another. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. I need to look at somebody and say, I won't die like this. My prayer is going to bring me back. Uh, you ought to say that again. My prayer is going to bring me back. My prayer is going to bring me back. I can't die like this. Glory to God. See, Satan done had a hit out on you and wanted you, amen, to kill yourself. But your praise brought the life back in you. Aren't you glad that y'all ain't saying nothing? Some of y'all was on the verge, amen, of committing uh, spiritual suicide, but the praise brought you back in there. Ah, that praise resuscitated you. Somebody shout hallelujah. We're so grateful to God, amen, for blessing us, amen, and keeping us, amen. I'm going to, amen, preach from this message, a perfect heart but a messed up will. Perfect heart, but a messed up will. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I want to teach from this message because I have a lot of phone calls throughout the week. Amen. <clears throat> Dealing with people that love God, sincerely love God, and they can't figure out why they keep falling into stuff. Yeah, I, I really, I really love God and you know, even my will, you know, my will is is so shaky is the things that I think I, you know, well, the things I fall into, you know, my heart. Amen. I have such a love for God. And sometimes, you know, you know, the question becomes, if I really love God, why do I feel this way? If I really love God, why do I have so much temptations that cause me to fall? And I must minister from this because this is going to help you all, amen, help you to understand, amen, God a little bit, amen. In the beginning, let's go to Genesis, amen, Genesis, we may need to they need to tell them not to fix the air. We have church like this, man. <laughs> air broke the other day. And have a service like this. We may not tell them. They might need to just leave it broke. <laughs> you know what they said? <laughs> you know, back in, <laughs> y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> you know, the little hot box church, they used to rock that. that it, they didn't have no AC back in the day. They just, the, the house used to be, it, it feel like the whole house is back, bouncing back and forth. Everybody sweating. Amen. It might call for you to have a service. We have a service like this based off of the AC being broke. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But you was in the club sweating it out. Y'all 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 talk to me there. Yeah. Amen. Genesis chapter two. You know, I must say that. It's hard to figure God out. It's hard to see God's trajectory. It's hard to try to 
gaze his mindset. It's difficult. It's complex. Say, God, why would you sit this beautiful girl in the midst of me and you want me to contain myself? Y'all ain't saying, it's going to get heavy today. I just want to go ahead and warn you. Amen, God. Why would you send somebody my way to agitate and aggravate me and you know that I struggle with cussing. God, why would you center me at a job where everybody hate on me and I still have a problem every now and again. I have a wine bottle or liquor bottle in mind. Y'all all right? God, why did you allow me to feel? In fact, why would you create a flesh like this? A flesh that want to party. Y'all ain't saying much. A flesh that want to sext. Lord, it's, 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 I, I know I'm talking, right? Why, why, why would God? Now this, all these things are things that you want to do. God, why would you make me like this and don't want me to do the things that you created me to be? Why? Why would, you, why would God do that? Why would he make me a certain type of way? And in fact, you know, there are times where there's a scent that a woman gives off unconsciously and it's called pheromones and what that scent does just like animals there's scents that animals sent off and a, a, a female dog and a male dog and a male dog will find that scent it's the same as it is with humans and then you'll have a feeling in your body that I, I feel like I gotta get this out of me I'll get this off of me God why would you create me like this God, you know that I'm in a situation where I can't be married. You know I'm in a situation when I'm not ready to be married. God, why y'all so quiet? God, why would you make me like this and expect for me to change from who I used to be? What you made me, how, how I was. You expect me to make this change. See, and this isn't for, you know, the person or that church to say God only looks at the heart and you come out. Right. It ain't for that. But God is a heart chaser. Because for the ones that fall into stuff and they just have such a bad time, like, man, how do I keep struggling with this? Why do I keep fighting with this? Why am I keep battling with this? God, I love you. I don't want to keep falling. I don't want to keep messing up. I don't want to keep having to confess this and confess. Why do I have to keep going through all of this? Some people have a perfect heart, but a jacked up will. Amen. Meaning that your heart want to do the right thing. You re Listen, I, nobody wants to wake up, and I had to learn this when I was uh, managing restaurants. I had to learn this. People don't wake up and say, I just want to go to work and do a bad job. Just like people don't wake up and say, I just want to go to hell. Well, most people. So it's like, what, what, what's causing this, or how do I change my will? You know, your will is driven by your mouth, your taste, your appetite. That's how, that's how I control it, just like a horse. A horse is controlled by their mouth. The Holy Ghost get in you, it controls your what? Mouth. Watch this. I want you to get Genesis chapter 2. And I know it seemed like if it ain't one thing, it's another. You know, and everybody, let me tell you this, everybody don't have the same struggle. That's true. And this is something that, that you got to get, and, and I had, I had to tell, tell people this because sometimes people would think that everybody got the same struggle, and then you start looking at somebody else for what they're struggling with. 
So you say you say, well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't struggle with that sex stuff because I, I ain't, that, that ain't my thing. I don't struggle with that. But you struggle with gossiping. See, so and then, and then you look at that person. Now, gossiping is, is just bad. Gossip is bad, but you look at that person. I can't believe she keeps gossiping. I can't believe she's still struggling with that. But you're still struggling with pornography. You're still struggling with masturbation. You're still struggling with, y'all ain't saying nothing. You're still struggling with vaping, smoking, rolling up joints and all that. You, you, that's your, y'all ain't saying nothing. That's your struggle. So you can't look at somebody. And a lot of times we like to pinpoint other people's struggles in their era, but don't know that just because that's not your struggle don't mean you don't have a struggle. Lord, I wish I had the right church this morning. Genesis chapter 2. Some of y'all got a, 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 a struggle with just being nasty. <laughs> just just don't, don't like to deal with people. Don't like to speak to people. Always rolling your eyes. That, and that's your, that's your struggle. You struggle with that. So we got to learn how to overcome that struggle so that our heart can match our will. Amen. See, see we, we want our heart to match the will. Sometimes we got the heart, but it ain't matching. It ain't in line with the will. Say, man, I, I want to do this so bad, but then the will takes me this way. Amen. Y'all follow me? Now, I'll give you an example. Heart and will. Somebody could be in a relationship, and I, I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm trying to study, you know, um, the mind of people. But you can have a woman in a relationship get knocked upside her head. Her heart, amen, is somewhere, and her will is somewhere else. Heart can be saying, hey, you need to, you know, get, get on out of here. Or the will say, get on out of here. But that heart say, well, I just love them so much. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They try to figure people out. Say, man, how in the world she's sitting in that relationship getting knocked upside her head and just won't leave? Y'all ain't saying nothing. The same situation, you keep finding yourself in that closet by yourself and touching on yourself. Yeah. Same scenario. Trying to align the per I'm trying to get my will to match my heart. Somebody shout hallelujah. Watch well, this. Genesis chapter 2. This is how God is. Genesis chapter 2. Amen. And start at verse number 15. Uh -huh. And the Lord God took the man. And put him into the garden of Eden to dress it uh -huh. and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. All right. So in the fourth verse, um, read, uh, uh, two, two and four. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. Uh -huh. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, uh -huh. and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. Mm -hmm. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Uh -huh. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Uh -huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Uh -huh. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. All right, so this is my problem. The Bible says that God planted a garden in Eden. When he planted these, this garden, he planted trees because God created everything. So out of all of the trees God created, why would he create a tree and tell me not to touch it? <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Why would God allow parties to go on in the world and say I can't go to them? Y'all ain't, ain't talking to me. Why would God put all, that's just like, you know, that's like somebody on a diet and they got cake, you know, wife making all this cake and they tell me they got sugar and all this stuff like that. They say I'm going to put that cake and put that pound cake in front of you, all that ice and all that stuff and say don't touch it. And you got a bad sweet tooth, and you just itching to touch it. You say, don't, don't touch it. You say, why would God place something in front of me and say, do not bother it? 
I think that's pretty strange for God to create something and say, don't bother what I created. So what is the intent? Because God wants you to love him from your heart. Thus, if I love God from my heart, it controls my will. Watch how, amen, that mouth work, that appetite. And see, I think the problem is, is that we don't eat enough of God. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. All right? Because uh, depending upon what you eat, it shows on you. In fact, a lot of the things that you eat, it start coming out of your pores. Uh. Certain things you start eating, you start smelling like what you eat. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I ain't going to go there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> go back there to Genesis 3. And verse number 5. Uh -huh. oh, start at 3, huh? But of the fruit of the tree, which in the, is in the midst of the garden, uh -huh. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh -huh. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh -huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. What well, the woman did what? Saw. So why did God give us eyes if he didn't want us to see certain things? <laughs> or why not? When I look in that direction, if it ain't meant for me to see it, why not block it out? These are questions that I have. Y'all ain't saying much. Why would I have eyes to see, but I ain't supposed to be looking on nothing to desire or to lust after? Why not? Why, why can't, you know, when this lady walk away, walk, walk across the street, why can't I just, why can't I just go blank in my mind? Are y'all brothers looking deep? Y'all ain't saying nothing. What about when that muscle man come in with a tank top at your job? And why can't, when y'all young ladies, why can't this block it out? They got real quiet. Got real quiet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Why, why, why can't my, you know, what, these are the questions that I have for God. Why, why can't this stuff be blocked out of my mind? Why do I have to see it? And if I see it, I want to touch it. Oh, my. Thank you, Tisha. All right, read it again. When the woman saw uh -huh, that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes uh -huh. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, uh -huh. she took. She did food. what? She took. So now because I saw it, I want to take it. Not just touch it, but I want to make it mine. And sometimes we just grab on to struggles and pull it real close. Some of our struggles, you know, so, now some of the stuff y'all be struggling with, y'all don't really have to struggle with. Sometimes we just pull stuff real close to us. And a lot of that struggle starts with what you see. And when, you're, when, you're, when your eyes see something, that's just like somebody sees some food, then your mouth start watering. In fact, a lot of times you don't even have to see it. Somebody can say something, and once they place it in your mind, it goes into your imagination. So now I'm imagining some collard greens. I probably shouldn't have said that because some of y'all might stop listening. To the message, but now if I say that, now mouths start to water because it's now in my imagination. Now this is why even with a perfect heart, a lot of y'all wills are jacked up by what you're hearing, what you're listening to, and what you're watching. So I got to figure out how to control what I watch because if I control what I watch, I'm controlling my will. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I got a perfect heart. Sometimes my, my, will my will is messed up. And so we try to figure out, how could I get over this? Will I get over this? Will I be able to conquer this? Can I tell you something? Yes, you can conquer it. Because a lot of times y'all, and, 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 and you know, sometimes, let me tell y'all this, y'all can't use a struggle just to say, well, this is something that I struggle with, so this is what I'm going to do. Because I struggle with it. Amen. Why y'all ain't talking? We can't say that this is what I'm going to do just because this is my struggle. And I don't struggle with nothing else, Lord. I just struggle with this every now and again. I, this is just my little thing. Can't, you can't, you don't want to, because what happened is sometimes we can get too acquainted with our struggle. And then our struggle become our behavior. When your struggle become your behavior, then we got a different problem. Yeah. See, a struggle means, come here, son. 
Jeremiah. This is a struggle. Oh, that time. This is a struggle. We pulling and tagging and pulling. This is a struggle. And then see, if 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 I'm fighting, God looks at your heart like this boy is trying. And and see, a lot of y'all ain't trying. Y'all just falling into stuff. Falling into something and trying, that's totally different. Sometimes you'll be like, oh, you know, you, you just with some of y'all just be pacing, Lord. I, <laughs> Can't do it. Let me call somebody. I got to get. And sometimes I just fall right into it. Say, man, I'm not here already. And then you start feeling real bad. And then you'll be talking to God like, God, I, I, you know, why? And, and sometimes you have a heart-to-heart conversation with God. Say, God, why would you make me like this? And you, I can't do this. Why would you create my body to function like this, but you don't want me to do this? See, and I'm going to be honest with you. God hear that more than people down here faking and acting like they got it all together. Can I, can I be honest with you? A lot of jokes, bro, y'all be putting on. Sometimes we front so much and act like we don't have no struggles or problems. Amen. And you know you're struggling with something. God, you listen, God would rather hear somebody talk to them and say, hey, listen, you know, I, I, I'm struggling. And In fact, there's a scripture, you had two men. That was there. You had one man, he, he talking, you know, um, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. You know, he, he said all of the accolades, and then he looked at the sinner, and he heard the sinner more than he heard the, the Pharisee. Why would God hear that person? Because he was boasting and bragging about what he was and what he had and how he did this, and then had to compare himself to another person. See, I ain't like this sinner man over here. Y'all ain't said much. And sometimes we, and, and let me tell y'all something. If you ever want Satan to be happy, you start talking about somebody else's struggle. A big as that person, oh, yeah, yeah, you didn't hear about her? Yeah, that's what she struggled with. And God is a God that looks at that person. That's like, listen, God, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm struggling with, and I need your help. Now, I ain't talking about a person that just want to do it and confess, but you a person that'll go to God, even talk, try to find, listen, I, I just don't know why. I, I, I made this way, God, you made me like this. In fact, David was talking to God like that. Listen, in sin, you, I was conceived. God, you may, in fact, go down to the Psalm 51. Where, where, I'm going to get that one too. All right, Luke 18 and 9, then we're going to go down there to Psalm 51. I wish I had a better message that would keep you all with me. All right, read, uh-huh. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves uh -huh. that they were righteous and despised others. Uh-huh. Righteous so, and did what? Despised others. That's a person that's self-righteous. Mm. And you want to, being self-righteous is dangerous. That means you got everything together and nobody else got anything together. Everybody else is struggling except for you. Right. Self-righteous person. Amen. Right? And if you could be a fly on the wall, boy, that person that, that act like they ain't struggling, boy, it'd be something. Amen. <laughs> Read, uh-huh. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Two men went up to the temple to pray, uh-huh. The one a Pharisee uh -huh. and the other a publican. Uh-huh. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. See, the first thing he do when he in his prayer is comparing himself to other people. When you're praying, your, your job ain't to compare nobody. When you're praying, you should be compare, uh, talking about yourself or comparing where you came from to where you're going. Amen. Don't get down on your knees and talk about everybody else. Oh, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like Brother Ron. Uh, Lord. Oh, I'm so grateful that I ain't like Dana. Oh, God, I'm so grateful I ain't like Dave Vaughn. Oh, you don't get on your knees. You, you cry out, God, I'm a filthy mess. I need you to, y'all ain't saying nothing. I, I, I messed up, Lord. I need you to touch me. Yes. Fix me. Work on me. I'm talking about somebody else. Lord, I thank you. I ain't like, no, you better be thankful that God is still working on you. They ain't give up on you. Yes. And then, then God, and the Bible had a nerve to say that our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we think we're doing something when we live it right. But God said, man, that, that, man, please. Because a lot of us just do the bare minimum. And you know what filthy rags is? 
Let me tell you what filthy rags. He ain't talking about just dirty rags. Filthy rags is synonymous to what young ladies use when they're on their cycle. That's what a filthy rag is. So when he said that your righteousness is as a filthy rag, he talked about the rag that they used to use when they were bleeding. That's a filthy rag. And some of y'all young ladies know what I'm talking about. Say that that's how your righteousness is. Read, uh huh. Extortioners. Extortioners. Unjust. Unjust. So now he he's talking about everybody. I, I'm glad I'm not like the extortioners. I'm glad I ain't like the folk that ain't just. I'm glad I ain't no adulterer. Read, uh huh. Or even as this public. Or even as the person that's standing beside wow. me praying. <laughs> and some of y'all be comparing this prayer to that prayer. I'm glad I don't struggle in prayer like this one. Glad I don't pray like that one. You got you got something wrong with your mind when you get when you get to place like this. You need pray, you need to say, hey, Pastor, I need some counseling and I need something cast out of me because that 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 when you when you start thinking like that, that something's wrong. Amen. Read, uh huh. I fast twice in the week. I fast. Listen at him. I fast twice in the week. <laughs> I give tithes. Uh huh. Of all that I possess, I tithe, I fast. Uh huh. And the publican standing afar off uh -huh. would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. So, so now I'd rather be like the publican, because the publican got his head down. He's not even boasting, saying, "Look." He's not even coming to God with his head up. He's coming with his head down, saying, "Lord, I'm jacked up." Read, uh huh. But smote upon his breast. Uh huh. He laid on. He laid on the ground. Uh -huh. God be merciful to me, uh -huh. a sinner. I want you to have mercy on me because I'm a sinner. That's what the public has said. Read, uh-huh. I tell you. I'm going to tell you something. This man went down to his house uh -huh. justified rather than the other. Uh -huh. For everyone that exalted himself. If you exalt yourself, and some of y'all, y'all struggle is pride. And let me tell you something. Pride is just about on the same lines as homosexuality. Because God said he hated it. your prideful self. He said, if you exalt yourself, because see, a person full of pride reminds God of who Satan is. And sometimes we get so prideful, nobody can't tell it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We're always comparing ourselves like we better than everybody else. Whew. All right, read, uh-huh. Shall be abased. Uh-huh. And he that humbleth himself. He that humbleth himself. Shall be exalted. Shall be exalted. Uh-huh. And they brought unto him also infants. So now. You got two men that are praying. One man that you would think shouldn't be praying, and then the other guy that you think should be praying, but because of the way he came to pray. You're comparing yourself like that. You don't, you don't get into a place where you're comparing yourself to somebody else to make you seem like you're better than them. Oh, I haven't done that in years. I don't struggle with that. Don't you know that just because you said that, God will make you struggle with the same thing that that other person struggled with? Oh, God. Let me give you some Bible now. Let me, go, let me show you that God hates a proud person. I want to go to Proverbs, and then I want to go to, uh, uh, go to Proverbs chapter 6. Is it 14? 16. And then we're going to go down to Galatians 6. I hope this is helping. All right? 6 and 16. These six things, uh-huh. The, doth the Lord hate. Uh-huh. Yea, seven are an abomination now, to him. we know that homosexuality is an abomination to God. And then God said that six of these things I hate, but one of these things is an abomination. Read, uh-huh. A proud look. A proud look. A lying tongue. Uh-huh. And hands that shed innocent blood. Uh-huh. And heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift 
and running to mischief, a false witness, false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sow discord among brothers. So God, when he look at a proud look, he said, "This is something that I hate. I despise it. This should not be. The saints should not have a. You, you shouldn't be struggling with pride if you got the Holy Ghost. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be so prideful. And see, now there's a difference." Between being prideful and maybe have a small struggle. I understand that, you know, that some people don't, sometimes in their mind, they, you know, snap back to what they used to be. But when you're talking about a person that walk in pride, arrogance, you got to question if they got God's spirit. It's questioned because, go down into Philippians chapter 2. You got to question that. And that's something you struggle with, you might just stay on altar a little longer. Philippians 2, start at 5, uh-huh. Let this mind. What I want you to do, I want you to put this in your mind. I want you to let this mind be in you, uh-huh. Which was also in Christ Which Jesus. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Who? Who? Being in the form of God. Uh-huh. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Yes. But made himself of no reputation. But made himself of what? No, no reputation. We talking about God in the flesh when he was here. And see, this is why you need to get out of the flesh and get like him. That's why I, need, I need to change your mind. And took upon what? Him, the form of a servant. Don't you know when Jesus came here, he could have came like this big superhero or big super person? Y'all ain't saying nothing. He could have came down this big old giant, big strong cut up. All that, but the Bible said he came like a servant. Came like a little, like a little, little servant. That's what, that's what the Bible talks about him when he was a lamb. See, lambs, you know, they're, they're very big. They don't get in, they get a little trouble, but they ain't as bad as goats. <laughs> Amen. Read, uh-huh. And was made in the likeness of men. Made in the likeness of men, uh-huh. And being found in fashion as a man. He, what? He humbled himself. Humbled himself. He, what? Humbled himself. So we got characteristics of the Holy Ghost. Humility is a characteristic of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not arrogance. Not pride. Not I got it all together. In fact, when Jesus was in the flesh, he, the Bible said he was tempted too. Amen. Oh, y'all must not read your Bibles. Give me Hebrews chapter 4, I believe. 4 and 15. For we have not an high priest. We have not a high priest. Which cannot be touched. Which cannot be what? Touched. Touched with what? The feelings of our infirmities. Uh -huh. But was in all points. In all points what? Tempted. Tempted. So God had temptation. Just like you have temptation, God had temptation. And you think that you're so perfect. Mm. Think that you don't have any temptations. Oh, no, that don't bother me. I ain't worried about that. That, that ain't, you know, that wasn't my thing. Drinking wasn't my thing, so that don't bother me. You know, you y'all y'all walking by the liquor store or driving by the liquor store, and somebody in the car say, "Hey, keep on driving, please don't stop right here." And you talking, "Well, why you say that? You you ain't over that yet." But you mess around, go by one of these clubs, and they got they, they, one of their old slow jams on. They shoulders start lifting up and down. <laughs> same one that was talking, the same one still got a struggle. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. And put on keep sweating somebody. You be in there sweating somewhere. <laughs> Galatians 6. Let me show you this now. Lord, I lift your head and say, Lord, I want you to help me change my will. Come on, say, I want you to help me change my will. Six and one, uh-huh. Brethren. Brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fall, uh -huh. ye which are spiritual, ye that are spiritual, restore such a one. I want you to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Uh huh. Considering thyself. Considering who? Thyself. So you that saved person that think you ain't got nothing going on, when you talk about somebody else struggle, you better consider yourself. Because God would intentionally make you go through something that somebody else that you done looked at, turned your nose up at. God will let you go through that same thing. Remember how some of y'all, you know, some, some, some of y'all had car issues before. 
and you ain't want nobody in your car and all that stuff like that, and then you, it was your turn to not have a car. Mm. Oh, y'all, hey, why y'all looking at me like that? Because God will let you experience that and say, oh, you was all that now. Now you got pride. You don't even want to ask nobody for a ride because the way you treated them. Wow. That's good. You're looking through, going through your contacts and trying to find out who I can get a ride from. <laughs> well, I can't call her because I ain't give her a ride. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. God, listen, that, it, it happens. And God will intentionally allow this stuff to happen so you can know that you ain't no better than the other person. Amen. Your car be the next one down and you looking for a ride. <laughs> Y'all ain't said much. Amen. Amen. Let me get on back over here. He said, considering thyself, lest thou also be what? Tempted. Dealing with the same thing that that person dealing with. God will put the shoe right on your foot. Amen. The one, the shoe that you say you don't fit and you can't get in and all that stuff, God will allow your foot to fit right in there. Let you walk that same path that they walk. So you won't be able to look at nobody. That's why God said that we all came from the same lump, came from the same dirt. Go to Romans 9. Romans 9. Amen. Start at 20. Uh -huh. Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So this even gives you the, it, this even tells you that even them saved, unsaved people out there, you ain't got no business talking about them because you came from the same dirt that they came from. <laughs> you know how you can look at somebody talking about, well, why is she dressed like that? Why is she looking like that? And you just was like that last year. And some of y'all be struggling with that. That's why y'all, uh, I'll get in trouble now. That's why you keep all your old pictures from, uh, Lord, I'm about to get in trouble. Y'all keep all your old Instagrams where you, where you had your whole thigh out. Amen. Y'all ain't saying much. So you can reminisce on what you, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So you say, man, I, I sure wish I could put that back on. But then be looking at somebody that got the same thing on, looking at them different. You come from the same lump as the sinner. Yes. And pride done did way worse than what they're doing. Right. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, it was, a, it was a praying woman in that, in that prostitute. Amen. Yes. It ain't a prostitute in the praying woman. It was Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> it's the praying woman that was in the prostitute and brought you to God. It was the, y'all ain't saying nothing. It was the preacher in the in the whoremonger. It was the preacher in there. Yes. Amen. Not the whoremonger in the preacher. Oh, Lord, mercy. Before you came and before you got saved, it was something that was in you. That what God drew you here. So you're from the same dirt as everybody else. But some people have a perfect heart, but their will is just jacked up. Amen. And that's a good thing when your heart is perfected. But if you got a bad heart and a bad will, it's a bad combination. Because a bad heart and a bad will, that just, that just messed up all together. Because what happens is I don't even have a heart for God. Thus, this is why my will is so jacked up. At least a person that got a, good, a, a perfect heart and a jacked up will, at least they fight for a while. Amen. Let me give you this. So he said, read that again, 9 to 21, uh-huh. Have not the power, the potter power over the clay uh -huh. of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor? Of the same lump. So even the ones that are saved and the ones that are not saved, those that was chosen, those that wasn't, he said, you can't look at them no different because y'all all came from the same lump. Amen. Same dirt. And that's why God made us from dirt. So you can remember. So you won't get all high and mighty like Lucifer did because he was made of stones. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. <laughs> Y'all with me? Amen. I wish I had another message. 
preach y'all happy and grab my ear and all that stuff, but y'all need to hear this. First Corinthians 10 and 13, what does that say, huh? There have no temptation. There have no temptation. Taken to you, but such as is common to man. Taken, that has what? You. Taken you. Read that again, huh? There have no temptation. Taken you. Taken you. Now, when we look up that word taken or when we define that word, when you look it up, it means to seize or to kidnap. And sometimes, hallelujah, your temptation kidnap, kidnap you, take you. And this is why we can't, you know, get into a position where we're drawn away. See, when we're drawn away, that means that our will is following the taker. A temptation is a taker. Y'all ain't saying nothing. All right, let me give you this. Go down to the James. We're going to come back to First Corinthians. Let me show you this. Grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor. God's going to help my will. Say it again. God's going to help my will. James 1 and 13. Uh huh. Let no man say when he is tempted. I'm sorry. Go to 12. Watch this. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that do what? Endureth. Endure. Now, God. see, when you think about endurance, that means that a person that is struggling and fighting through. Mm -hmm. That means I endured. I got slapped in the head. I got, you know, what? But I'm still alive. I'm still running. That's a person that endured. Read, uh-huh. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, uh -huh. which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. That love him. Why, why would he give them the crown of life? Because these are the, pe the people that have a perfect heart. Mm -hmm. Deal with a person's heart. Read, uh-huh. Let no man say, when he is tempted. Let no man say when he is tempted. I am tempted of God. Uh -huh. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Uh -huh. Neither tempted he any man. Uh -huh. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away. Every man is tempted when he is what? Drawn away. Of what? His own lust. Uh -huh. and, and enticed. So now, if this happens, that means that my temptation done seized me. Done arrested me. Done jacked me. Took me to another place. This is why most case scenario... When temptation comes, movement happens. When you're tempted by something, most times you're, you're, you're drawn away or you place yourself in a position. And then a the person is enticing and they fall. Read, uh huh. Then when lust has conceived. Then when lust have conceived. It bringeth forth sin. It bring forth sin. And sin, when it is finished. When it's finished. Bring it forth death. Bring it forth death. Read, uh huh. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Uh huh. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So now, the good and perfect gift, of course, a person that has a perfect heart, that deals with God giving it to you. See, God will love a person. See, even when, even when Adam fell because of his heart, God came and looked for him. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, uh-huh, and uh, verse number 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam. And the Lord God called unto Adam. And said unto him, uh -huh. where art thou? Where are you? Uh -huh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So then I hid myself. So he, he got seized by his temptation. So it calls him to run and hide. But even in his hiding, God said, hey, hey, Adam, where you at? Where are you? Not that God didn't know that he sinned because God knew that he was, he knew he was going to sin. He knew that Adam was going to sin and then he said, hey, where are you at? I'm still looking for you. And that's why a lot of you all are still here because God said, hey, Leron, where you at? Joel, where you at? I'm, I'm, I'm looking for you because I know you got a heart. And this is where, you know, the Bible talks about he's seeking for somebody that's going to worship him. Uh, seeking a, a true worshiper and spirit of the truth. You know, you're talking about somebody that heart is after him. Yeah. See, true worshipers, their heart is in it. People that don't have a true worship, their heart not in it. Heart not in it. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just a fad, you know? Crying out, doing all that stuff because everybody else is doing it. But when it's true, it's heartfelt. Not only can you feel it, but God can feel it. Isn't it something when, you, when your worship touched God? 
Isn't it something where you can praise God and it, it make him move? It touches him? It causes him to get, amen, into this realm. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, go to Romans chapter, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. I'm almost done here. Y'all took up a lot of my time when y'all were running around. <laughs> Nevertheless, it was a wonderful run. I was running too. I can't even hold y'all. Seven and verse number 20. Uh-huh. Uh, start at 19. Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So now, Solomon writing this story, man. He's talking about, man, it, it, out of all these people on the earth, that ain't nobody got it right. And then Solomon, this man was the wisest man. You would think that he would have been wise enough not to have all these women. And not, not just that, not have all these women, but to make them temples for gods. So you got to think about that. God gave him wisdom. What kind of wisdom that was? He had a different will. He had a different will. So God gave him wisdom. He still had a different will. He still he he, he didn't even have. He, he was like, man, this 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 man. He he way worse than his, who his dad is. And then now catch this, and, I, and I'll go over the scripture later. But even though Solomon had all the wisdom, he still couldn't figure out women. That's what he wrote. He, he wrote this. He said. He he said he, he said. Uh, <laughs> How could I figure out a woman? And he had all his wisdom. I got all his wisdom, you can't figure that out. Had all his wisdom, but couldn't figure out that I, I or could, didn't know that he wasn't supposed to be building temples with other gods in them for these women. Because the women that he had, they had different gods. He got a thousand women. I, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> but this is what Solomon saying. He said, there's not a just man on the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And so we still look at the earth now, and this is why you don't turn your nose up at people that's not saved or people that's not in the church. See, the only difference between you and them is that they freely do whatever their struggle is, and you have some restraint. That's the only difference. So you can't look at people in the world and say, oh, I'm, I'm tired of her. She just keep cussing and acting crazy. She doing all this. And that's something that you're struggling with. Only difference it is that you got a little bit more restraint than she do. She just freely do it because she's in the world. So I can't look at, I can't look at this person differently. Amen. And it's just the grace. It just ain't nothing but the grace of God and the mercy of God that you where you at. Because some of y'all just one thought away. Lord, have mercy. He does. Some of y'all one thought away from being where you used to be at. I ain't even say one movement, just one thought. One thought. You think you, the, I think of genius or whatever, click your heels and fall on somewhere else. Just one thought. <laughs> Romans chapter 3. I'm about to close here shortly. All right, 3 and 23, uh-huh. For all have sinned. For all. Now, this is, let's cover everybody. You, your mama, your grandmama, your nephew, your cousin, that perfect one that's sitting beside you, cover everybody out there. It says that all have sinned and did what? And come short of the glory of God. Come short. So you got sinning, and then you have people coming short. It's two different things. So you have some people that think that they're, you know, I'm not sinning, but I'm coming short, but you place in the same category. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I can be doing more what I'm doing. Amen. You go, to the, you go down there to, 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 to Burger King and, and that meal is $10 and you only got nine. You came up what? Short. short. <laughs> 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So just like the person that's in sin, a person can be in sin, and then you got people that's in the church that are coming up short. I'm not worshiping like I should, coming up short. I'm not praising God like I should, coming up short. I'm not studying like I should, coming up short. I'm not doing my purpose like I should. I'm coming up short. A lot of short saints in the church now. Coming up short. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I don't want to come up short. People are coming up short. And you're, you're in the same sentence with a person that have sinned. All have sinned and come short. Come short. Come short of his glory. We don't want to come short. We want to fulfill. We don't want to be short. We want to, we want to exceed. In fact, the Bible says that when it comes down to us, he said he wants you to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. The ones that thought that they had it down. You, you need to behave better than how they're behaving. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Romans 7. This is one of my favorite scriptures here. Paul was trying to figure this thing out. 7. All right. And verse number 14. Uh huh. Well, we know that the law is spiritual. Uh huh. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Now, what are he, what is he, what, what, what is he, what is he trying to say? You're asking a carnal person to be spiritual. You asking somebody that's in the flesh, I want you to be spiritual. I want you not to do all. You got all this, and this is why. <laughs> this is why it's so funny, you know, when people deal with the law and you see how the law is. You got the 613 laws and the Bible talks about, listen, you break one, you broke all of them. And then they try to force people. They was trying to force the Gentiles into being, doing the law. Yeah, someone trying to talk about the law. He said, listen, your fathers ain't keeping. How you going to try to make me keep all of them? <laughs> so we're trying to be, in essence, in a church of God, law-abiding citizens. Trying to be law-abiding citizens. Even out there, you ain't a law-abiding citizen when you run them lights, Amen. stop signs. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Sure Speed limit say 55, you doing 89. Oh, Lord. oh God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And you know, see, I'm guilty of running stop signs, not just speeding through them, but, you know, I'm from a, a, a different state. And, we, it's, and you know, it's funny in Philly, they got on a sign, don't be doing stop and rolls because... <laughs> We, we stop at, we don't really stop at a stop sign completely. We yeah. bump it and keep on rolling. The tires still. <laughs> and so we're, we're guilty of those. You know, so, so we are people that, to be honest, we don't like laws. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Can I just get a few honest people? Can y'all be honest yeah, with me today? Yeah. We don't like laws. Just say, you, you, you don't like them. Some stuff you just don't want to do. You don't want to put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. 7, 14, 15, read, uh-huh. For that which I do. For that which I do. I allow not. Uh-huh, I allow not. For what I would. Uh-huh. That do I not. That do I not. For what I hate. Uh-huh. That do I. So now Paul, even Paul, he was having some problems. Amen. You know, then the Bible go on in the book of Proverbs somewhere. Uh, it talks about a just man falling seven times. Amen. Amen. So then you say, well, and, and, and I, had to, I had to look at that scripture because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure it out. So how does a person get to be just to say that he's fallen seven times? Because your just not, might not be what the just is in the Bible. So sometimes you're knocking out your seven and say, well, I guess I ain't no just man. Say, well, what is a just man? How God is looking at your heart aligning with your will. Is my heart right? This is why I want you to go down there to write, uh, Rome, uh, 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 Psalms. I'm about to close y'all. Psalms uh, 51. And we need to get to a point in our life, and I'm ministering to you all that need this. Amen. I know this ain't, every, this ain't for everybody, but this is for some of you. 51 and 1, uh-huh. Have mercy upon me, O God, uh -huh. 
according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judges. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. So listen, listen to David. He said, and this is somebody that, that his heart, he got a perfect heart. Listen to how he talked to God. He said, against thee only have I sinned and done as evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when you judge. So he said, Lord, when you start talking and you're thinking about judgment, I want you to keep this in mind. Read the next verse. I was shaped, behold, behold, I was shaped in any He said, first thing I want you to know, God, <laughs> that I, I was in some hidden sin. <laughs> he said, when you start judging me, Lord, I want you to remember this. Read. And in sin. And in sin. Did my mother conceive me. My mother conceived me in sin, Lord. So, Lord, when I came out, you know, I was just, I'm, I'm just a part of sin. <laughs> so, when you're about to judge me, I want you to remember my situation. Read, uh-huh. Uh, behold. Thou desires truth uh -huh. in the inward part, uh -huh. and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh -huh. Purge me with hyssop. Purge me with hyssop. And I shall be clean. Uh -huh. Wash me. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. So now you got, you got David that's confessing to God or talking to God about his issues. And he said, God, I need you to do me a favor. Instead of judging me and, 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 and you know, uh, because it, the judgment did come, he, he, he still got judged because the baby that he had, the baby died. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's when it, it took almost a year to talk about what done happened. Oh my God. But he was still talking to God, and, it, you know, of course, judgment did still come. Read, uh huh. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. He said, now, <laughs> when. When I hear, Lord, read, uh-huh. Hide thy face from my sin. I want you to hide your face from what I've done. This is David talking to God. And sometimes we got to be real with God in our hearts. Amen. Sometimes we go down in prayer like we got it all together instead of telling God and being transparent with God of what you got going on. Sometimes you got to talk to God. Sometimes I just talk to God like, God, what? why is this going on? You want me to do this, that, and the third. Why do I have to deal with this part right here? Sometimes we got to talk to God. And a lot of you all don't know how to, you know, talk directly to him and ask him why. You know, some, you ain't, every prayer or every conversation with God, don't have, it doesn't call for you to be yelling and all that. It doesn't call for that. <laughs> it don't. Amen. I'm not saying because some, 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 some prayers, see, David said, conversation with God, you don't have to yell. Because God don't always respond with a loud, you know, Elijah was looking for something big. He was looking to see if it was in the wind, see if it was in the, in, in the, curve, the quake, see if it was a light, and it was in a still small voice. Mm. So if that's the communication, sometimes you can sit there and talk to God. Sometimes I just be in my house and I just talk to God. And you say, well, Pete, my, my mama told me don't question God. <laughs> well, he says that he know everything that you need and desire even before you what? Ask is a what? Question. <laughs> I, mean, I know sometimes you say you ain't supposed to question God or stuff like that, but what you mean you can't question? He said, I, I know what you're going to need and desire right before you what? Ask. That means I can't ask a question. Amen. You can ask God. Hey, God, how do I get through this? Why, why is it like this? I'm not saying you're going to get an answer. Read, uh-huh. And blot out all my iniquities. I want you to blot out my iniquities, uh-huh. Create in me a clean heart, oh but God. But what I want you to do is I want you to deal with my heart. From this day forward, Lord, I want you to deal with my heart. If you deal with my heart long enough, it can control my will. Read, uh-huh. And renew. And renew. A right spirit within me. Uh-huh. Cast me not. So now watch this. He's talking about, he talk about deal with the heart. Then he's talking about deal with the right spirit. Sometimes you can have the heart, but the wrong stuff come out your mouth, the wrong spirit. Amen. 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 
Read, uh-huh. Cast me not away from thy presence. Lord, I don't want you to throw me away from your presence. See, and David already understood that what he did could cause God to kick him to the curb, but because of his heart. Read, uh-huh. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I don't want you to take your spirit from me. And it ain't talking about the Holy Ghost, but I don't want to deal with that right now. But he was talking about his spirit, the engagement that he had with God. When God came on him. I mean, dance in the presence of the Lord. God came on him. Read, uh-huh. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, uh-huh. And uphold me with thy free spirit. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, when David, <laughs> tried, he, he said, in essence, what he's saying, Lord, I don't want to pay for this. <laughs> he said, I, I, don't want you, I, don't, I don't want you to put this thing on me. I don't want the wages of this to be on me. I want this to be, you know, I want, I want to try to slide out of this. I don't want it to be the worst. Uh-huh, read. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. And so now, he said, now, I, I'm going to treat, pe teach people thy ways, meaning that, Lord, based upon the way you, this is how David is. He said, based upon the way you judge me, I'm going to teach others how they should be responding to you. So, so, so what he's saying is, if you be light with me, then more people will be drawn in. Because now he deals with sinners. Read the next part, huh? And sinners shall be converted unto thee. See, people don't want to be converted if they hear about this God that's just, just so mean and just beat them up for all this. So David said, listen, God, <laughs> from how you did me. He said, when, then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Meaning, he's going to teach the transgressors the way that he dealt with him. Yes. And he said, if you deal with them good. Sinners shall be what? Converted. God, I want you to remember. And, and, and see, a lot of times some people don't get caught up in certain things and different issues because what God has on their life. And God don't judge things so swiftly because there's something that that person have on them. Can you imagine all the stuff that you got tangled and tied up into? And if, if that stuff would have been highlighted or exposed, don't judge. You know, Bible talks about don't judge certain things before the what? Before the time. So this is how David dealt with He said, Lord, just... Just have mercy on me, please. And then when you have mercy on me, I'm going to teach other people how you did. I promise you, I'll get these sinners in here and let them see how much of a break you gave me. And, and they'll, they'll believe in a break given God. Because some people believe that, you know, God was a killer in the Old Testament. And we, we know that. Guiltiness. Deliver me from what? Blood guiltiness. All right, who back there? Come on, keep up with me. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. Uh-huh. Oh, God. See, see. David didn't want to hold that guilt on him. And sometimes we do certain things and we can't fulfill the rest of our ministry because we're still guilty. Amen. You still hold on to something that God already threw away. My God. The blood guilt. He talked about when he killed, uh, 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 I forget his name, but uh, uh, Bathsheba's husband. And so, yeah, you're right. So, so he said, I want you to deliver me from this blood guiltiness. And he couldn't be, he can't, he can't be king if he holding all this stuff on him. Amen. And you can't be what God called you to be if you got all this weight on you. Amen. You can't get past where you are if you still hold on to your past. All these things that you done did, all the stuff that you done, that, that you done made God up to. Look at somebody and say, you got to let it go. Gotta let it go. And once you let it go, read, uh-huh. Oh, God, uh-huh. Oh, God, thou God of my salvation. Uh-huh. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. And, and my tongue now, he couldn't even praise God like he wanted to because of the guilt. And a lot of times when we have issues in here, and then, and then see, once he got through this, then he was like, I will bless the Lord, and I, I can bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Because he said, God, I need you to get this thing off me. Amen. People that have fallen still got to praise God, still got to lift him up. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Is that the last verse? Read. O oh Lord. O oh Lord. Open thou my lips. Uh huh. And my mouth shall show forth thy praise. So now get that guiltiness off me so I can praise you. And sometimes you got to come in the house of God saying, Lord, get that guiltiness off me. Get that heaviness off me. Get that stuff off me so I can give you a sincere praise. Yes, man. Thank you, Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let's stand. Let's pray. God, we thank you. God, we pray that you keep our heart perfect 
and allow our perfect hearts to line up with our wills. Lord, we know some of our struggles are there to keep us humble, but God, help us to make it through it. Lord, we know that you put in your scripture and said that you are able to keep us from falling and present us faultless. Lord, we want to be in that place. Hallelujah. Lord, every distraction that's keeping us from